So as you probably know by now, JP Gabamin has done his Achilles. He's facing another lengthy layoff again. Depending on who you listen to, it looks like he won't play again in 2020. This is another serious one. Sounded like it was one of them freak incidents where nobody was near him. And this isn't great when you consider that Everton paid, what was it, 25 million for him last summer and he's made one Premier League start. In fact, it's the most fucking Everton thing ever. But it got me thinking about other unlucky Evertonians down the years, of which there have been many. I mean, let's be honest, we seem to have one of them cosmic gravitational type pulls that seem to attract the most unluckiest footballers ever. So I put together a list and as you can imagine it's quite extensive but if you think I've missed off any unlucky Everton players down the years then leave them in the comments section underneath. And remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you're notified whenever we do a video here on Grand Old Team. But the first guy on my list is uh, Tony Kay, one for the oldies. And for those of you who don't know, Tony Kay was a footballer in the 60s, had the world at his feet. He was a Sheffield lad, apparently a really, really talented footballer. And then one day he was involved in some illicit gambling activity and he placed a bet on the result of his former club. And he got handed a... Lifetime ban from professional football. Which meant that he, uh, he he missed out on potentially what many believe would have been a World Cup winning medal. And that was it then. Career over. Done. See, in a way, Tony K's story is kind of different in the respect that he put the bet on. So you could say he's responsible. But the punishment was pretty severe and it meant that he never played football again. His career was over. And then there's Paul Bracewell from our magnificent team of the 80s. Bracewell had two years of injury hal. At New Year's Day up at Newcastle, he was apparently on the receiving end of a terrible, terrible tackle, which unfortunately meant that he missed a sizable chunk of his career. And then to return, only to lose an FA Cup final to Liverpool in 1989. And then there's Joe Parkinson, whose career ended at 28. And by all accounts, he uh, destroyed his knee, driving Everton on to safety in 1995 and to an FA Cup trophy. He spent three years injured before he finally just was forced to hang up his boots. And then more recently, Phil Jagielka, who was in like really, really good form going into the FA Cup final with Chelsea back in 2009. He developed this really solid partnership with Julian Lescott. And of course, although Chelsea were favourites for the FA Cup, you kind of believe that with the likes of Phil Jagielka, we'd go on to win it. I mean, if memory serves me correctly, we had loads of injuries going into that game anyway it was it was criminal it was it was tragic and I think it probably heavily contributed to us not winning a trophy that day but Jagielka had scored the winning penalty against Man United to take us there then got injured a couple of weeks later and that was it I think he was out for about eight months and then there's the Yak who like Phil Jagielka um, he was in amazing form and uh, injured his Achilles down at Tottenham I think Everton won 1-0 that day and it put him out for the entirety of the season, a season in which Everton had quite a good one. And with his goals, we may have, it may have propelled us into a Champions League place. Who knows? And do you know what? I, I don't think Yakubu was ever the same. And then there's James Vaughan, who I've interviewed before, name drop. And I'm not just saying this because he, he's a, he's a really nice, pleasant fella in real life. But I don't think people realise how good James Vaughan was. Like the lad broke Wayne Rooney's record in terms of the youngest player to ever appear for Everton. But he just kept on getting injured and in like four years he made eight starts. And then I remember us playing at Bolton and he he severed an archery in his foot and it was like a Hollywood injury. I just remember Andy Johnson putting his his hands on his bald head just in disbelief as Blood squirted everywhere. But people have also mentioned the likes of Victor Anachivi to me and, and Brian Oviedo. And I'd agree that they're, they're candidates too for the unluckiest Evertonians. But if we were to compile a list and rank them, I think Gabamin would be pretty high up there. And I do feel a little bit sorry for him. But what do you think? Let us know in the comment section underneath this video. As always, I will do my best to answer every single comment we get. I'm Adam Partington. You can find me on Instagram at Part Adam. And as always, thanks for watching Grand Old Team.